Hey summoners and welcome to another pro guides video. Now due to popular requests by our users, we've created a guide to itemization. We're going to talk about the approaches you need to take in order to buy the right items for each game. We'll talk about everything from simple itemization to the very specifics of several items. Let us know in the comments down below if you have any feedback and what you liked about this video or what you want our next one to be about. But before we get started, make sure to go to ProGuides.com if you want to see huge improvements to your rank right now. With the Pro Pass, you get exclusive Pro Courses, and Pro Guides has a feature called InstaPro, which provides on-demand coaching from the best of the best. Over 100,000 gamers have used InstaPro today and ranked up significantly. So don't miss out on this opportunity and rank up now using the link below. All right, let's get rolling. So let's talk about things that all champions can do. Itemize based on the enemy team. While certain items might not be effective for some champions, they may be valuable purchases because of enemy team compositions. The most common situation where you'll adapt a build is by building defensive stats as a response to the enemy team. Aside from a couple of exceptions, offensive items are typically going to stay the same because you're just building what's best for your character. When playing against 5 AD champions, there's always going to be that one person spamming your chat, build armor, build tabbies, and while it's annoying, they're right. Against heavy AD teams, regardless of your champion, you'll likely need to consider changing up your build. For those with big commitment issues, a small change like taking ninja tabby can really go a long way. The same thing applies for teams that are all AP, with MR of course. A common damage split you'll see on the enemy team is either a 4-1 allocation, meaning 4 AD and 1 AP, or 4 AP and 1 AD. One reason they're common is because of how effective they are. Having 4 champions dealing 1 source of damage pushes enemies to itemize for it, which allows the outlier to deal more damage. The champions who have the most variance in item builds are actually tanks, so we'll talk about them first. As a tank, your role is significantly based on how effectively you can soak damage, so understanding the following concepts is very crucial if you want to be a good tank player. I think we can all agree on this one thing. No matter what game you play, efficiency is essential to winning. Let's say you're playing Malphite. By champion design alone, you already want to lean towards building armor. What you need to do next is ask yourself something like this. What's the most effective way to play against a team that's 4 AD and 1 AP? In an ideal world, it would be to build armor and kill the AP threat. The best case scenario would be the one where you can eliminate the highest damage threat towards you, that way you'll be able to tank more effectively afterwards. You can build a cheaper MR item like just one Negatron Cloak or one Spectre's Cowl, that way you don't get completely blown up. But your goal would be to build items that are more effective for you, and avoid excessively spending money where it doesn't need to be. As a carry champion, the biggest adaptations in your build you'll usually be making are building Maw, Zanyas, Banshees, or a Guardian Angel. Against teams with heavy AP damage, you'll likely need to consider buying a Maw to subvert the damage even if it might not be an item that helps you maximize your potential DPS. At times, survival is what'll allow you to dish out the most damage, so building a Guardian Angel or a Zanya's Hourglass against Assassins is usually an option that can potentially win you a fight. Sometimes it's not that straightforward. The enemy team could have a well spread out mix of damage. They might have two or three magic damage threats supplemented by two or three physical damage threats. And in these situations, you need to itemize versus whoever is the greatest threat to you, or instead itemize solely for efficiency on your champ. Tanks will likely need to build more health since it'll help them tank both sources of damage, while carries will either build solely for maximum damage output or itemize against one damage source while focusing down the other in fights. Although it may seem elementary, we need to discuss basic itemization. Anytime you open up a website or watch one of our videos, you'll usually find an item build supplementing a champion. These recommended builds are likely based not only on statistics, but also a champion's playstyle and strengths. For example, a drain tank like Aatrox can make the most use of Death Stance because all the stats on the item can be effectively used by him and the passive synergizes with his playstyle. To make the point more clear, the idea is that you always want to build what effectively draws out the strengths of a champion, and you want to stick to these builds in most cases because they're never bad to go for. While they might not always be the most effective in every single specific scenario, they will never be the worst one. 
There's still one more thing that we have to talk about. Although this doesn't apply to every champ, some champs like Kai'Sa or Gragas have multiple build paths that are efficient. You'll need to choose a build based on what's most beneficial for your team or what works more effectively versus the enemy team. Against five squishy champions, you'll likely be able to itemize for a full AP Gragas build to blow up enemies. When your team already has a bunch of damage, you can instead build tankier and constantly lock down your opponents while soaking up their damage. With Kai'Sa, you can choose AP or AD builds based on your damage splits. If your top, jungle, and mid all locked in AD champions, you can adapt to this and build AP. Another thing to consider is that an AP build will allow you to build Zhonya's, while an AD build will allow you to build Merckskin. If the enemy team has an assassin threat like Zed, you can build AP to counter this while an AD build would give you more breathing room versus a champion like Malzahar. There are plenty of champions who have alternate build paths, such as Death Dance Katarina, Comet plus Bruiser Kha'Zix, and as the game continues to evolve, it's likely that we'll see more of these arise. Always consider these options during champion select. If you're a number cruncher or an innovative type of player, feel free to try them out and discover them yourself. Now that we've set the foundations for understanding itemization, let's talk more in depth about situational items. The first one we need to look at is Stopwatch. Not enough low elo players understand the value of this item. We see it so often in competitive play, and there's a reason why. For 600 gold, you're able to buy a Stasis Active, which can decide the fate of a teamfight. Comparatively, you could get two cloth armors, a longsword and a random accessory, or an amplifying tome. In most cases, a Stopwatch is going to be so much more impactful in a fight. In spite of the fact that it's a single-use item, good use of it can potentially win a game. Randuin's Omen is one of the best armor items in the game. Versus enemies who have a lot of crit, it's even stronger. Against champions who rely on crit, like Yasuo and Ash, you'll definitely want to consider building one. Whether you're building it for the outright tankiness it provides, or the active slow, Randuin's is a solid defensive pickup. Number crunchers may note that Randuin's Omen is not an efficient item to buy for the stats it gives, but its passive and active effects are strong enough to make it a strong purchase as a response to certain champions. Adaptive Helm is basically the magic damage equivalent of Randuin's Omen. As a side note, the two items pair together to shut down Corky and other magic damage based auto attacking champions. By itself, it's a great counter to many different magic damage threats who rely on spamming abilities or whose damage relies on a single ability that ticks multiple times. You can build it as a soft counter to champions like Rumble, Cassiopeia, and Rise. In cases where the passive won't benefit you, building Spirit Visage instead because it's a more efficient item might be better. While it's an essential item for several champions, Black Cleaver also acts as an optional choice for many others. Teams that are heavily stacked with physical damage threats will find a lot more value from somebody building Black Cleaver. The Armor Shred will benefit anyone on the team that deals physical damage. In cases where multiple people build it, the Shred doesn't stack unfortunately. What it does do, however, is allow multiple champions to assist each other in reaching the 6 stack maximum more quickly. Abyssal Mask is a defensive item that also doubles as an offensive item. Enemy near the owner of the item take increased magic damage. Tanks can dive in to allow their teammates to thrive, or tankier mages can build it as a defensive item while still increasing their own damage output. Tanks who also deal magic damage like Amumu, Malphite, or Orn can build it when they need some extra sustain and damage. AP champions like Cassiopeia or Rise can build it to make themselves more tanky because of their button mashing nature. When there are significant AP threats on the enemy team, Abyssal Mask will allow them to duel them with ease. Banshee's Veil is an item that fills a similar niche to Abyssal Mask. It's a defensive item that also provides ability power and cooldown reduction. Pick up a Banshees when you need to block hard engages or crucial abilities because it can significantly increase your champion's impact. Another decent reason to build it is an AP versus AP matchup and you need the extra magic resistance. While the passive it provides is a shield, it can be a strong offensive or defensive tool. Enemies in general will have to expend more resources to catch you out, and they'll have a harder time disengaging since they'll have to burn more cooldowns. Imagine a situation when you're playing Kennen and you flank the enemy team that has a Janna. If Janna uses both her W and Q during a fight, Kennen will have a free opportunity to flash in with his ultimate. Even if the Janna then uses her ultimate, the Banshee's Veil will block it and allow him to land a devastating AoE stun. We talked a bit about Maw of Malmordius earlier on. This item is great to build versus teams that heavily rely on magic damage. Hex Drinker is the cheaper version and also a component of the item. One thing to note is that Maw is not a gold efficient item by itself. 
But once the passive effect is activated, its cost to stat ratio becomes excellent. On the other hand, Hexdrinker is a gold efficient item even without its passive. You basically get the magic shield as an added bonus. What this means is that if you need a little bit of a boost versus magic damage, you should almost always consider buying a Hex Drinker. In some solo lane matchups, you can even rush it as your first purchase versus a dominant AP threat. If you do upgrade to Maw, however, it's going to be a much bigger commitment, so you should look to do so maybe later on in the game, or if you're absolutely confident that you can make the most use of its stronger passive. Quite frankly, Guardian Angel can be a problematic item. It's not a very effective use of gold in terms of the stats that it gives, but it provides an iconic and powerful passive in compensation. It can be built either defensively as a backline carry or aggressively for frontliners. As a carry, it'll make it much harder for assassin champions to have the impact they'd like to in fights. Even if they manage to burst you down, they'll likely have to use all of their cooldowns and expose themselves in order to kill you. Afterwards, you'll have some breathing room once you respawn. Frontliners can build this to enable hyper-aggressive plays in fights. They can go in, look to hard engage, and potentially push enemies out trying to focus them. Even if the enemy team does focus you down, you'll be able to force crucial abilities, and then threaten them a second time once you respawn. Executioners is one of the cheapest situational items in the game. Its small price tag makes it a great way for your team to access Grievous Wounds when necessary. While you do miss out on some AD bonus for building it, it's affordable enough to make up for it. When the enemy team is heavily relying on healing or regeneration, make sure to pick it up. Here's a realistic scenario. You're fighting an enemy at level 6, and they use Summoner Heal. At level 6, Summoner Heal provides 165 health. So so Grievous Wounds will effectively deal 66 damage. In comparison, you could have 5 more AD if you didn't build Executioners. It would take 13 auto attacks before the mitigation from armor to match this. With this in mind, Executioners is a pretty clear, efficient, and often undervalued asset. When you're behind, you can pick it up so that you remain relevant. Even though you might not deal damage, you can support your team by providing extra utility. The other item that provides Grievous Wounds is Morella Nomicon. Although it's pricier than Executioners, it's an item that can be much stronger. Due to its hefty price tag, however, it can also be a hard int when you build it at the wrong time. What makes this item especially good is it's one of the only items that will provide you flat magic penetration. Building it in conjunction with Sorcerer Shoes in the early game can provide a huge power spike. You don't even need to finish Morella Nomicon if the spell pen is what you're after, as Oblivion Orb is a viable purchase on its own. Morello's is instead a magic damage alternative to Executioner's, so make sure you pick it up when you need Grievous Wounds. A pretty straightforward purchase is Quicksilver Sash or Mercurial Scimitar. When the enemy team has crucial lockdown abilities like Malzahar or Varus Ultimate, building the Quicksilver active acts as a hard counter. As one of the strongest actives in the game, it's understandable that the item's stats has below 50% cost to stat ratio. You definitely shouldn't build the item for fun or to troll, but the active is definitely worth the investment when it can quite literally win you the game. Considered a troll item at times, Magi Soul Stealer is an item that mid laners and supports need to consider buying. Especially when ahead, it's actually in your best interest to invest into one. If you're able to reach max stacks, the item is 273% gold efficient and is also 156% gold efficient at 10 stacks once you gain the bonus movement speed. It's definitely a risky buy, so make sure to only buy it when you're snowballing hard or if your role in teamfights puts you at very low risk of death. This concludes our video on itemization. Thanks so much to the users who requested it. It was a blast to work on, and we appreciate all of the input that we receive. Make sure to check out ProGuides.com and our YouTube channel to find more content designed to help you improve. Good luck on the Rift, and we'll see you all next time.